I think I have a slightly unique philosophy on pop art in Los Angeles. And, and one of the things is that since we have an industry here where people are production designers, I mean, I came up, I learned a lot of my skills in special effects, animation, and doing designs for animated shows and puppetry shows. And so what I feel like is we are in this town of blue collar artists. And what I feel like is that this whole notion of, of there being higher art and lower art and someone who designs and sculpts a toy or a cartoon or an animated movie isn't the same as this other person who shows in a gallery. I mean, I subscribe to the philosophy that it's all the same. It's all art. It all takes skill. It all takes technique and imagination. I know the term lowbrow is still bandied about now, but I really do think it's an antiquated term. I don't think it counts anymore. It's something from, I mean, if we're talking back to the 50s, it's something that's almost 50 years old plus. I don't know if it makes sense anymore. I especially think in Los Angeles that there's a lot of art being all the same. The quality of art that people generate, it doesn't matter the medium or what it ends up being for. Like the classically trained Disney artists of the 30s and 40s, were they any less of an artist than somebody who was showing in higher up galleries or anything like that. And especially when you get to the pop art sensibility, what we talk about when people look at some of the paintings and some of the things that are very, that are based on pop phenomenons or popular movies or science fiction or animation, and that that's somehow not as important as some other type of art. But then tell that to the person who's the young collector who is totally falling in love with their artists and totally falling in love with collecting and appreciating art. You're never gonna tell them that this is not good art. You're only just trying to excite something inside people. You're trying to take something in here, you put it out there, and you hope that you can excite that many people with something that you could create, that it would make people happy, that it would make people think, feel something. Robots came about mostly because I really suck at drawing and painting people. <laughs> I'm just really bad at proportions and anatomy. It was just something that comes very naturally to a lot of people. And, and I've even worked at it and it still doesn't come as naturally as these strange robot characters, which sometimes I found it was easier to ascribe feelings, emotions, and human things to a robot character and we could laugh at them, laugh with them, uh, feel bad for them, but not the same way you might if you saw like a representation of a human. So what I feel is like I went to robots because I could still milk all the humor, the humanity, and the feelings out of them, but just not go, why can't he draw people? Even when you see caricatures, there's just things we look for, either find comforting or disturbing. But if I'm kind of making up my own world and template for what a character is, then sometimes robots help. I can't go wrong because it's, it's kind of what I'm making up.